all right hey guys welcome back to the channel my name is brian from khax nation and in today's video we're going to be discussing on how to beat gula in part three of the keyblade war okay now personally for me gula was definitely one of the hardest if not possibly the hardest um because of the fact that he's in a way he's almost like a combination his restrictions that in he kind of puts you in are a little bit of a combination between a said and envy so <laughs> it's very difficult um and also considering the fact that as of right now arguably power is probably the probably the uh the weakest attribute out of the three so far between speed magic and power power is probably the weakest at the moment it just makes it even more difficult when fighting Gula. All right, at right, right now, speed is the strongest. Um, speed upright specifically, magic upright second, and then power upright third. Okay, so for him, just like with Envy, he also inflicts paralysis when he uh, counterattacks. He counterattacks after slot three of your Keyblade as well, just like with Envy, except Envy was slot two. Um, he strikes first, just like he does, just like a said did, as well as the fact that he reflects the base attacks. So off the bat, you already have the difficulties of a Sid, <laughs> of a said uh, in place. Now, the uh, the silver lining in this is the fact that at the very least, you don't have to deal with counters. So that's at least a nice load off your shoulders. But that's about it. <laughs> Anyways, though, I want to show you guys how I went about uh, defeating Gula. Um, it took me a while to kind of figure out the nuances of how to go about doing this, but I managed to do it. Uh, it is worth noting. Okay, there's there's basically like two or three different things that I did to make sure I was able to get, get past this. Okay, A, I made sure that I had in my setup a metal that had 100% uh, paralysis resist or... Or if you have multiple metals that have like the 20% paralysis resist, they combine to equal 100 paralysis. Okay, so as long as you have about 100% paralysis resist, you should be good um, across your Keyblade. B, you want to make sure that starting from slot 4 and onwards, okay, or at least starting in slot 4, you have a metal that starts raising your general strength back up okay or at least starts raising your strength um your p your your psm strength upright strength general strength starts raising all of your strength plus back up because of the fact that after he counter attacks after slot three he he will dispel all of your buffs that you currently have applied to you at the moment so all of the buffs that you have applied from your kairi will get completely dispelled so you need to make sure that you can Bump them back up starting on slot four. Now, what I did to make sure I did that, I have Ira, and Ira already provides uh, eight tiers of strength buffs. Okay, for upright general strength and power strength. It provides eight tiers, and since I'm copying my Ira, it definitely makes sure as I abs I have my max amount. Um, I have extra attack on both my Ira and my Angelic Amber, so that just makes it even better. It just it's just extra damage at that point. Now, one thing worth noting that I didn't mention for my Envy and Ased videos is the fact that if you notice throughout any point when fighting the Foretellers, that you're not doing enough damage, uh, that some of your best medals are only doing one damage, okay, and you have all of your buffs and debuffs, then most likely what is happening, what the case is, is the fact that your Keyblade level and or sub slots are not high enough, or you just don't um or you might need minus 60 ground traits on your metals okay it's it's most likely going to be one of those two things if not both depending on where you're at so just kind of throwing that out there i'll make sure to mention that in some of my other uh foreteller videos i'll be coming fairly shortly after this one as well but without further ado let's just jump right into it so just kind of cover uh my setup i kind of already explained the strategy a little bit Starting, I kind of have a fairly standard setup. Um, my main damage metals are st starting from slot four and onwards, just because of the fact that 
Gula will debuff you after slot 3. So what I did was, because of the fact that my first couple medals might not matter as much, um, I just made my dual wield Roxas is the one that has uh, paralysis resist 100%. Okay, um, he's put onto an upright slot, and to be honest, he does like almost no damage to Gula at all whatsoever, which is fine because he's literally there just for the uh, paralysis resist. That's it. Um, for slot three, I chose a metal that can still do a little bit of damage. Okay, because uh, my Youth in White happens to have minus 60 ground, so I was like, okay, I'll put him in my slot 3 as damage. But I also wanted to make sure that when Gula hits me, that he doesn't take a huge chunk out of my HP, where he, like, accidentally kills me, where he does the, the small attacks, okay? Um, what I noticed about Gula's attack patterns is that his attack patterns are slightly different compared to Envy's and Ased's. For Envy and Ased, Gula... Uh, even you said we'll do a we'll like alternate every turn we'll go from small attack to big attack small attack to big attack small attack to big attack gula is slightly different though his attack pattern is small small big small small big all right it's always two smalls followed by a big so you have at least enough turns to be able to get past them if possible okay um yeah, you have enough. You should have enough turns to be able to try and kill him. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think that's everything that's worth mentioning. So. Yeah, I think that's everything worth mentioning. So, just a quick recap. Make sure you have paralysis resist on your setup, starting from slot four and on at least slot four, slot five. Have some sort of metals that can uh, raise your strength buffs back up to max, so that way you can start doing max damage again uh and that's about it the rest can pretty much just be straight on damage just avoid speed metals because of the fact that glue reflects speed and yeah that's, that's pretty much it it's not it's not too complicated um the fact that we had we don't have to worry about counters honestly puts a load of pressure off of us at this point so we'll just go ahead and go through the battle so you can go ahead and see it i chose for my friend my friend shinra's ased supernova plus uh, just because of the fact he has just absolutely ridiculous strength value. Um, <laughs> like, he has plus 3,000 strength and then a 120% extra attack. Like, how can I not use it? And minus 60. So, yeah. I'm using this as my friend metal. Go ahead and jump right in. Go ahead and skip this so there's no spoilers. Okay. So, right here, like I mentioned before, he attacks immediately before you even start your turn. Just like how I said does. So, the same way, so actually, no, this is going to be slightly different compared to his set, but because of the fact that Gula reflects speed metals now, doesn't, and doesn't care about power metals, I'm actually completely okay with using my Kyrie Supernova immediately on turn one. Uh, this will use the overwrite from her Supernova to completely get rid of all of the max defense buffs that Gula originally had, um, and replace some debuffs, as well as gives you max buffs. So now from here, I'm just going to go ahead and use my uh, Angelic Amber to take advantage of the reverse buffs and debuffs that Kyrie Supernova provided for that one attack. All right. Now, all the buffs and debuffs are gone because of the fact that Kyrie Supernova only lasts for two attacks, including its own attack. Now I can just go ahead and let my setup run. I have a guilt buff because of the angelic amber, so I don't have to worry about it. We're going to be lasting for quite a few turns, so you want to make sure you have enough supernovas available uh to provide guilt buffs for every single turn so just worth throwing that out there um and right now i'm just letting my my keyblade setup just run through as much as possible okay there's another small attack i'm gonna go ahead and use Another supernova to get, the, get that guilt buff again. Like I mentioned, this time is 280%. I think Angelic Amber only provides 250. As you're noticing, because of the fact that... Uh, oh, I forgot to mention. That because of the fact that I use Roxas in slot 3, it helps uh, mitigate some of the damage. That gets hit to me after uh, slot 3 from the revenge or whatever it is. Okay, so there's a big attack. Which is fine. Go ahead and keep using Kyrie. I'm going to use another supernova right here to get that guilt buff again. 
it's pretty much repetitive at this point. It's, it's the exact same thing. Every turn. You just have to make sure they use the supernova every turn to get that kill buff, and you're pretty much fine. Again, like I mentioned before, he has an attack pattern of small, small, big, small, small, big. All right, Supernova for another uh, guilt buff. All right, either this turn or next turn I should kill. There he is. There we go. We killed Gula. And I think we still had like two Supernovas left. Alright, so that's how you kill Gula. The strategy is honestly not too complicated. Uh, just to re reiterate, on your setup, make sure you have 100% paralysis resist. Make sure you have on slots 4 or 5, preferably both. Um, you have metals that increase, that increase your strength buffs back to max. Um, as well as the fact that you want to try and use power metals if possible, just to help do max damage. Uh, you, and you want to make sure you have enough super uh, guilt boosting supernovas uh, to last for every turn possible. Okay, but other than that, not really too much to mention. It was fairly easy once you kind of know the concept behind it. So if you happen to find any other type of strategy or setup that you could possibly use, go ahead and let people know in the comment section down below. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, or you found it helpful, or both, leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when to upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KX Nation. I will see you guys in the next video. Most likely the next 4th Telemetal or, uh, video. <laughs> Alright, you guys take care. Peace, y'all.